Yeah, I, I would, in response to Senator Kiffmeyer's question, I was just going to say if you're rolling a joint using a pipe or smoking with a bong, then that's smoking. But if you're using a machine to vape, then you're ingesting in another way. You're not smoking, you're breathing in the vapors. Okay, you're not smoking if you're breathing. Senator Kiffmeyer. <laughs> I see. Oh, that makes. I agree with Senator Kiffmeyer. If you're not this. using a joint, a pipe, or a bong, you're not smoking it. In either way, I'm not doing, so it doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> so then the effect of this, if we don't do an e-cig, if you go into a restaurant, you can have an e-cigarette, but you can't vape or smoke in a public place. Cannabis. Can't cannabis. So, I mean, right now, it's unclear whether you could go into a restaurant and vape tobacco. Mm -hmm. We want to make it... You know, because, and that's the purpose of the e-cig bill, is to to try to clarify whether or not it is the wisdom of the legislature to consider vaping, smoking, and by doing so, pro prohibiting it in the places where smoking is prohibited. What we're doing here is we're saying, regardless of what how we treat tobacco vaping, cannabis vaping for the purpose of... Um, uh, medical marijuana is not allowed in those places where we're prohibiting the smoking mm -hmm. of. Oh, Mr. Chair, I'm still just puzzled. How would you know what somebody is doing, whether it's marijuana in there or cannabis? Sorry, the um, I don't know what that's another question. But anyway, how would you know if they're vaping what they've got in there? Senator Sharon? That's a very good question, Senator. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's coming out of the vapors, uh, and that's part of the issue in the discussion that we'll be having on e-cigarettes. It could be, could be this product. It could be other, it could be illegal drugs. It can be um, nicotine and other metals. So the truth of the matter is that's the, the fundamental problem is that we don't know. But in the instance of this case, we want to just be clear that uh, the, the le we're legalizing well, the use of, of uh, marijuana, medical marijuana ingestion in, a me in this methodology, that it, that it follow the Clean and Door Air Act. Senator Kiffmeyer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. In regards to the fiscal note and going through this, I've noticed uh, repeatedly uh, that there's a no checked by local. Um, I have heard from local law enforcement and others that they do expect uh, increased costs. And so, Mr. Chairman, I'm puzzled. Um, in every single one here, it's as though this has not been taken into account at all. Um, I, I'm not Senator that I found, Kiffmeyer, unless the our, author can respond to that. Oh, on Mr. our fiscal note process, you're talking about the local impact yes, mm -hmm. statements? I mean, we don't do that. I mean, it, we... There's a statement here, though. Well, there's... You're, oh, you're talking about at the top, where it says no local impact. We... Um, no, oh, Senator Dibble, did you? Well, well, Mr. Chair, I, I, I of course can't. I'm not involved in the in the uh, creation of fiscal notes that occurs in the executive branch, so um, I can't speak specifically to how those conclusions were reached uh, for the purpose of creating this note. I can, however, tell you that uh, I disagree strenuously with the representations of local law enforcement and the level of impact that's going to occur at the local level. I think the research and the experience from all of the other states show that um, the effects and the impact uh, in the larger communities, particularly when you take into account all of the controls um, that are contained in this bill, um, will be, will be non-existent, uh, minimal to non-existent. Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, my, my uh, comment had to do with local. And the box here is not a little bit or minimal. It is just plain no. And uh, that uh, they're not included uh, whatsoever. And so we can be real generous on a state level, uh, but it is on the local level, the, uh, the local police departments, uh, the county sheriffs, um, so we've looked at some of the others here, but we just a plain old in every single case as though it was it is um, Not even relevant whatsoever to the discussion and from what I read in my local newspapers and other things that I read 
uh, in most any cases, um, anything that gets to the BCA or the Department of Corrections is usually somewhere on a local level. And I just think it's just not quite as, um, you know, the, it, it's interesting that the Department of Corrections is able to get a generous fiscal note, but our local law enforcement are uh, not given any consideration from what I can see just in regards to this fiscal note. Senator Dibble, Senator Brown. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, to Senator Dibble, do, do you know if there's been any studies in New Mexico or Arizona or states that have legislation in place that's similar to this, not recreational use, but a very tightly written bill like this is, is there any studies to if that's affected local law enforcement financially in any way? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Brown, um, uh, so uh, a couple of a couple of documents that I'm aware of, and I can share them uh, with the committee. Um, one is um, this this big issue about um, that gets raised about uh, more uh, medical more cannabis um, ending up in the hands of teenagers and or sending some sort of a, a signal uh, to teenagers that um, that smoking cannabis is okay and it drives up um, teen use. Um, the research is in and the answer is that is just not true. There's no diversion that occurs and there's no additional teen use that occurs in those states. Um, and I think that's pretty definitive and I'll share that research document uh, with you and in, in the committee. Um, the other um, uh, uh, question is, you know, kind of overall levels of increased crime related to cannabis. Um, I have this document um, around medical marijuana dispensaries and their effect on crime, and it, it, it does uh, cite some, some anecdotal as well as some research-based data um, from a number of states where it shows there's no effect. Um, even in California, where, you know, you, you have, I talked to a, a young man who works here in the Senate um, a couple days ago, and he lived in Oakland where there were seven on his block, which, by the way, would never happen in Minnesota. Um, and, and it shows in, uh, in, in analyzing data from Los Angeles, Denver, um, Colorado Springs, um, a, larger, uh, a larger study from UCLA exploring the ecological link between crime and medical and marijuana dispensaries, a Regent University study, uh, researchers from the University of South Florida, some more evidence from Los Angeles and crime trends. Uh, and overall, uh, there's a larger research around crime trends in those states. So states that have even worse laws than ours just have not seen the effect of, of medical marijuana on local law enforcement or additional crime activities. So the evidence just isn't, doesn't support the claims. Senator Kiff, Mike. Well, Mr. Chairman, if that's the case, then why do we have funding for the Department of Corrections in this fiscal note? That's my Senator Kiffmeyer, <clears throat> that's, that's not in our jurisdiction. Pardon? That's not in the Department of Corrections fiscal is not in our jurisdiction. We will be having a hearing in full finance, and we can talk about it there. Senator Sharon? If I may, though, I mean, that's the point of my. Uh, Amendment is that I think that I think that there are assumptions and there are that are that we need to review in in right. time. So and that's and my we'll work on yeah. a clarify, right. uh, clarifying. Sure. And Senator Dibble indicated a willingness, and mm -hmm. Senator Benson mm -hmm. has been working with him. Senator Dibble. So, so Mr. Chair, I'll just state for the record: I think the assumptions in the fiscal note for Department of Public Safety and Corrections are flawed, fundamentally under the bill as they analyzed it, and even more so now that we've taken the affirmative defense provisions out. Yeah, okay. 